Welcome to Impact Duty. I'm your host, Manisha Dadlani Kriplani, bringing you empowering stories of friends and people I admire. Their voices have given me joy and the momentum to share their stories with you. Divya Seth Shah is an actor, an animist, an animal lover, an environmentalist, a writer, and a singer. With a host of talents and skills, she has graced our screens for over three decades in a variety of roles that have warmed our hearts and touched our souls. Hi, Divya. Welcome to Impact Duty. I'm really looking forward to our conversation today. How are you doing? Thank you for having me. I'm really happy to be here. And I love the fact that you're sitting in Zurich and I'm sitting in Pune, <laughs> India, and in my balcony. And we can have a chat and we can record this and we can show it to the world. Lovely. It's, it's, it's surreal and so wonderful. Wow. What's the weather like over there? Uh, is it still raining? It's really glorious. The monsoon has just begun, so it's a bit sunny and the winds are blowing and it's overcast and it's just lovely. Lovely. Pune weather is magnificent. It spoils you for the rest of the country. <laughs> I, I, I got to agree with that. Um, and we've actually got a beautiful summer day over here. We had lots of rain the last week. Uh, Let's so we've talk just... about Zurich and how wonderful the weather in Switzerland is. Please. I'm not trying. always. Not always. I have to say that November and December are actually quite frightful over very here. It's very dark. Very uh, dark. But uh, now that we're embarking on summer, um, I must say this is my favorite part of the year over here. And we've got a beautiful I, I sunny day. I just love Switzerland because I, I, I love cleanliness and I love uh, nature and I love mm-hmm. the environment. And I love the fact that people must have civic sense which also yes. boils down to the fact that there are less people. Yes, yes. So the yes. resources and the space and, uh, you know, just just the, the ingredients are, mm-hmm. are enough for everyone. What happens in my country is we're just so many of us that even the most beautiful places are overrun and overcrowded. Mm-hmm. And with that will obviously come pollution and garbage. And don't mm-hmm. let me get started. So let's let's begin here. <laughs> well, in fact... Um, Part of our conversation, I hope, today will center around uh, environmentalism. But before I take you on the environment journey, I would love to draw you back to uh, your career, uh, which has spanned over three decades um, within the industry. Uh, Wow, I mean, really, uh, (laughs) that's quite incredible. Um, And you started uh, with a debut uh, with Humlog, uh, which was a TV serial. Way back in 1984, did I get that right? Yes, absolutely. In fact, it was India's first soap opera. Really? It was the advent of television in India. So before that, there used to just be Krishi Darshan and Chitrahar in the news, which mm-hmm. was paramount. And of course, the Sunday movie around which our entire weekend circled. But then Hamlok came and everybody moved towards their televisions at 7.30 mm-hmm. or 8, I forget what the time was. Every evening, it became not just a family affair, but a community affair, a village affair, a colony affair, a building affair. Everybody wow. began to identify with this family, with the characters in it, with the people in it, cast their aspirations on them, took took their grievances from them, and this mm-hmm. whole, uh, you know, upward mobility from them. And it was a smash success. And I believe I so. Out, I got the part. And then after that, I went to college. And then I started doing theatre in Delhi. And it's right. only after that that I came to Mumbai with work in hand and the uh-huh. television industry on its boom. Really? So this, this we're looking at as the early 90s, I presume, right? Uh, yeah, when... I came to Mumbai in 93. So after right. I finished my college, St. Right. Stephen's in Delhi. Uh-huh. And uh, then I did theater in Delhi, and then I came to Bombay in '93. That's right. the year I did uh, Banegat Me Baat and Darar and Dek by Dek. And Ooh, all I remember shows. that. Yeah, all these lovely shows. Yes, Dek by Dek is one that I remember. And yeah, um, all of them are running on, uh, on YouTube right now. So <laughs> I'm going to go back and watch all of them now. <laughs> Yeah, I go back but, to see how I'm looking. So, 
And uh, Divya, is that the reason? Was it because the, the boom had taken off uh, with TV that you opted for TV at that time as opposed to, to films when you came back in 93? No, I, I don't think it was such a, was such a thought out thing. I, I just uh-huh. wanted to be an actor. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I, I came to Bombay with work in hand. And right. uh, television just progressed organically. And uh, even the few uh, offers that I did get for films after the TV shows were a success. They were all, uh, you know, for sisters and friends and, uh, and you know, the bhabi and all that. Why would I do that when I was playing leading lady on television? So, totally. um, you know, I, I didn't have this FOMO about the Hindi film, you know. I, I just want to be an actor. I just wanted to be an actor. For me, the medium mm-hmm. uh, was not that important. I would have loved it if there were interesting films. But there was no off. There were no offers as such. They were all really, really mediocre offers, and contrary to popular belief, there there isn't that kind of money in films unless you're the head runner, you know. So right. So uh-huh. it was just an organic uh, flow of events that I started doing so much television. Right, but you have had a lot of significant roles on uh, yes. in films um, as well as TV. Um, have there been any roles that really resonated with you that are so special to you, either because um, they resonated with the kind of person you were or a role that was really significant for you because of the challenge of that role um, as an actor? Um, no one particular one stands out. But yeah, when we, I was doing television, there was this show called uh, Adhikar, which was directed by Lake Tandon and where I was opposite Irfan where I played a character called Zubeda, who was a Hyderabadi girl. And um, she was married before and uh, she's a widow and Irfan falls in love with her. And, you know, it went against every taboo of, you know, it was a Muslim social. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I I loved her because she was so contrary to what I am. You know, the way she spoke and the way she thought and the way, uh, you know, her evolution was quite lovely. But uh, I've more or less liked almost everything I have done. There are a couple of things which I didn't, which I don't even talk about or remember. I just behave like an ostrich and pretend I didn't. (laughs) Wow. And recently you've done uh, two web series. So I believe last year you did uh, Sandwiched Forever. Um, I watched a couple of episodes of that. Um, And then you did A Married Woman, which is based um, on the Manju Kapoor book. I've read that book. I love that book. Uh, so I'm really uh, looking forward to watching the series. Uh, no, really so- pleasant. I, was, I was really pleasantly surprised. I was not so sure about the part earlier, but uh, it works. It works. And the show and the two leading ladies in the show are so marvelous and so honest in their performance that it's quite lovely. And Sandwich Forever, of course, is... is I will never forget it because it was the first thing I did after the pandemic lockdown in India was over. Literally a right. week after the lockdown got over and it just fell into my lap and everything worked out and we have the most amazing team of actors and directors and DOP and everything was just perfect. In it. And for two months, we had just the best time, which was, it was, it was like a godsend after the mm-hmm. lockdown after being mm-hmm. home for four and a half months, after not knowing if we would ever work again or if the world would survive, you know, to be able to do something like that was just marvelous. Right. Just marvelous. I'm so, so grateful for that. And of and, course, it was so much fun. And it shows. Uh, it really does show. Like you said, the team was really in sync. And so there was more fabulous comic timing. And I mean, whichever episodes I watched, I totally enjoyed my, uh, my viewing of it. Um, what, you see, what you see is what was happening on set. You know, really? Once we were just all completely, you know. And this is knowing that outside this set door, there is a pandemic raging. Yes. And touch us anytime, you know. And we have families and children to go home to and older parents to go home to. But we just left that at the door and we just worked morning to night for a month and a half and we said we just have to do this. Right. There was no fear on that set. And once when we had a bit of a uh, you know setback when one of a couple of people tested positive because we were doing routine tests. Yes. We were like 
as long as the six of us and the two directors are not affected, we're continuing. Right. We're not stopping. None of us were. Nobody was scared. Nobody was like, oh, what's going to happen if we fall sick? Yeah. We just continue to work. And taking on a comic role, is that difficult? Were there any challenges with compared to I, drama? I, I, have to, I, have to, I have to control myself. I need to <laughs> control me so I'm not over the top and I'm not guffawing too loudly or <laughs> making her a little larger than life than she should be. So mm-hmm. I love comedy. I love comedy. I just... And comedy loves you. <laughs> wow, thank you. <laughs> I think it's so cathartic and so wonderful. Yeah, and um, you've had a significant present, uh, a significant presence in your life with your mom, Sushma Seth. I mean, she's a prominent actor in her own right, um, and I know she's been a mentor for you in terms of okay. acting. But are there any learnings that you've imbibed imbibed from her apart from acting? Oh yes, everything, e- everything, okay. everything I am, everything I believe in everything I try and inculcate, which she already is. And I, I'm still persevering, whether it's being non-judgmental, whether it's being calm, whether it's being spiritual, whether it's being understanding, everything is from her, you know, to evolve. I, my sister, my my siblings and I were just talking this morning and I was like, I don't think she's going to be born again. I think she's go to, <laughs> she's attained. <laughs> so I'm going to be born the bat. <laughs> she's, she's quite remarkable she's yes. quite quite a remarkable human being she's the most fair and non-judgmental person I have ever known wow. and you've had the opportunity and strong, to sh- and strong <laughs> and progressive and forward thinking and there is no this shouldn't be done that shouldn't be done you know oh, what will this that's why we are like this that's why I'm like this excellent uh, the, the thought of oh, this is what must be done and this is the time to do this or what will people say or what will society say or how will I fit in has never even occurred to me. You know, it's not fun. Yeah. I don't understand the vocabulary because I've never had to deal with it. Lovely. I've never faced it in my home or in my upbringing. So I think that liberation mm-hmm. that she and my father gave me and my siblings is the greatest gift. It's, it's greater than money or homes or businesses that they could have given us that sense of liberation that go and wow. be who you want you, you don't need to adhere to any rules wow. make your own and live by them live are your siblings you are your siblings also um within the industry no no, no. my brother is the chairman of a tea company and uh-huh. my sister used to work in the aviation industry but she gave it up a long time ago but She's the one who keeps all of us together. <laughs> wow. And you've, you've shared uh, stage presence uh, with your mom, um, whether it's on TV or I believe you have done. Yes, go ahead. Tell us a little bit more. Uh, I don't, not, not really on stage because I, as a child, of course, I've seen all her performances. And been, if there was a child needed on in her play, I would be the child. And stuff like right. That. But uh, you know, waiting for her in the wings and watching her go on, that's what made me decide this is the uh-huh. only life I want. But uh-huh. yes, of course, television and Hamlok, she was my daddy, and that's how I got the part because she had already been cast. And then, uh-huh. like, uh, you know, we're looking for this part, and you have a daughter, can you meet her? So I was just bumming around her summer holiday, and she said, just go meet them. Right. And it, ha- it just happened. So, and then, of course, she was already in Dekh Bhai Dekh when I got you know, the part, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Any other mentors or uh, inspirational forces that come to mind right now uh, off the top of your head? Oh, Absolutely. okay. There was Gary John, who was the director of my theater group. Right. Who is probably one of the greatest teachers of all time. When you meet him and you study uh-huh. under him or you, or you are directed by him, you realize what a teacher does. Right. You know, otherwise, it's such an ambiguous uh, epitaph to have, you know, a teacher. He just, before you know it, you're doing what you're meant to do without there being, uh, you know, hardcore uh, direction or, you know, no, you have to do just this. 
he would just manipulate and we, you know make us malleable so that we Lovely. suddenly uh, on dress rehearsal everything would fall into place and you know his whole uh, his whole gang of kids and students were all still very very attached to him and uh, love him a lot and excellent he is remarkable he was really really Mm -hmm. Excellent, Divya. And Divya, this allows me now to bring us to uh, envir environmentalism wow. and uh, what a large part that plays uh, in your life as an environmentalist. Um, okay. How did that happen or how did that transpire and why did that transpire? I, I think uh, any woke person right now has un understood that if we don't respect and love and uh, res you know uh, actually work and live in tandem with the environment, there's going to be nothing left. You know, right. we can't endlessly and uh, without mind hack down forests and uh, trees and just keep building our homes and make everything concrete. It's not we're making ourselves sick. Right. If if we just live by the thumb rule that mm -hmm. planet belongs to all species and not just to the human race. I think therein would be our salvation. Yeah. We, there is not one species on land or sea or in the sky that we don't use and abuse. Either we're eating it or we're using its flesh or its fur or its nails or its innards. I, yeah. You boil silkworms while they're alive. See? We can't bear to hear it. Yes. I tell everybody who's, I, I'm like, go to the shop while they're cutting that animal. Then let's see if you can eat it. You're right. It, it's, uh, we, there has to be, uh, and I, the argument that, you know, human beings have always eaten was different. You hunt it and eat it. It's a very different thing from breeding it and keeping mm -hmm. it in a pen and then killing it. It's, I think it's it's causing complete toxicity and complete degradation of the environment, and it's harming us. It's it's right. visible. This yes. last year and the next coming years mm -hmm. are going to be tantamount to what we have done to ourselves. Our groundwater has become so polluted and so toxic. This entire generation of children has such severe ailments. Mm -hmm. They have digestive mm -hmm. ailments. They have reproductive ailments. They have so many problems. We're not even discussing the mental health problems. Right, right. So we have to we have to wake up. I, I hope it's not too late. I really yeah. hope it's not too late. When we speak of prale, uh -huh. or when we speak of great flood, this is the beginning of prale as far as we are concerned. It's it's small, big, big incidents the COVID-19 or the tsunamis or the fires that have been raging across the globe in the last mm -hmm. few years, the tsunamis that are coming. Right. Is, we have to wake up. The, 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 the balance between the human race and nature is then skewed right now. And until yeah. that harmony is restored, there is no way we can be safe. Then it's, it's not possible. We're, mm -hmm. we're, we're spending trillions looking for life on other planets. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Who are you proving that to? For what? Yeah. Just fix it here. Yeah. Just and that up. said, I could hear a lovely a bit of bird song uh, in, yeah, in the can background. Can I tell you what my view is? Let me just turn you to my view. Oh, this is wow. My view. Oh, wow. <laughs> You've got a fair amount of greenery around you. Wow. Yeah. Thankfully, thankfully. yeah, I actually heard something quite delightful about you um, that you have uh, you keep little bowls of water uh, outside for uh, the dogs in your area and oh, yeah. um, for the other animals and they kind of gravitate towards <laughs> your house and even the owners have no idea why they're coming there. I thought that was such a beautiful thing. So there's, there's the first it started with a bowl this size. Then right. I it. Now there's a big truck outside the <laughs> because all the dogs who walk on this road, all their walkers tell me that they start pulling us when it comes outside your house because they know there's right. water there. Right. And it, they might see me. 
Right. So oh. now they drink water. They bark a little if I'm around, then I come out to pet them. Ah. Uh-huh. There is water for all the birds in small troughs. So right. It's it's the most. It's like a it's like a blessing and a gift for me in the mornings. So they'll come. Wow. The a kingfisher comes. The oh. Ah. Uh-huh. Sparrows come. Parrots come. They they come and they all decide whose trough is belongs to whom. Oh so really? They bathe, and they all bathe and they drink in it and then they fly. How beautiful! And the birds is. don't want food; they just want water. Beautiful. Even even That's the street animals, everybody feeds them. Everyone right. feeds them, but everyone forgets to put water out for them. Hmm. That mm-hmm. that is very necessary because they get really they don't know where to look for water. Wow. Yeah, that that is really lovely, uh, and something I hope a lot of people imbibe um, after watching this. I see a this. lot of people. I see a lot of people doing that now. Really, pandemic. Even though there was a lot of cruelty towards animals, mm-hmm. a lot of animals being abandoned, a lot right. of forests being encroached upon, right? A lot of poaching happening. But in spite right. of that, also a lot of kindness and a lot of people, you know, adopting animals. and feeding animals people were risking because you know during the pandemic they were not allowed to go out and they mm-hmm. were not issued mm-hmm. masks to just animal feeders right so people were risking risking their uh, you know life and risking their being attacked by the cops but they were like i have to feed these dogs i have wow. to feed so there were a lot of people doing that so i i think right. i think hearing stories of kindness is better than hearing stories of cruelty and yes even we shouldn't ignore those but uh, it's we need to uplift everything right now we need exactly to, we need to point out the good we need to point out the resilient we need to point out the harmonious right now and, and there's there's a fair amount of good that has also um emanated from this pandemic yeah. it's yeah. it's actually brought out um such fabulous uh Absolutely. stories of individuals doing so very much i know um, so many people i know so many people who are not very uh, they, they have earned money in a year a lot of actors mm-hmm, have no mm-hmm. jobs they have no mm-hmm. they are still serving food they are still part of the movement i'm like god aren't you tired right no but we need this we need this we need that mm-hmm. communities have gotten together to help each other which i think is a great thing wonderful and uh, they were you epitomize an empowered voice of an empowered woman Uh, what do you think are um, attributes of a woman of today, in your opinion? I think, in my opinion, a woman who is liberated is a woman who is free to make her choices. That is this. That for me is freedom. The freedom to make my choices. Do I want to work? Do I want to stay at home? Do I want to marry? Do I not? Do I want children? Do I not? Do I want mm-hmm. to serve? Do I not? The freedom of choice. do i want to keep this child or do i want to abort it this freedom of my for my body for my life which is taken for granted in the male mm-hmm. species is something women have to fight for and are continuing to fight for it in all parts of the world mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's that freedom is so necessary it's so necessary and you know that the whole talk of uh, women need to be up, uplifted don't uplift us at all just treat us equally and respect <laughs> just leave us alone and we'll manage you know don't hold out my chair but don't stand in my way either mm mm is that i i don't want anybody to do anything to me but don't stand in my way either right i'll do it myself i have been taught well <laughs> wow um and you really have such a glow to you um i'm going to ask you about the secret elixir uh <laughs> to your youthful looks um and your essence i mean there's definitely a glow that emanates from the inside and it definitely shows on the outside um if you'd like to tell us more about some of the secrets of your um ever youthful looks think, and essence it's a work in i think it's a work in progress i think every day you have to try and evolve every day you know you'll fail you know I, right. i try to control my temper and i fail i try and do things more and i'll fail 
So every day is a new is a new page. So you don't have to. Right. Oh, I haven't done it in the last five days. So what's the point of me doing it today? That's something else my mother taught me. Every day, every single day, there must be discipline every single day. And as actors, we have to be disciplined because our jobs are few and far between. Mm-hmm. So when my next job comes, if I'm I've fallen to pieces or I look like I've fallen to pieces, then it's going to be very hard for me to get work. So for mm-hmm. me, I have to maintain every day. I must eat vegetables every day. I must wear a pack every day. I must do pranayam every day. I must walk every day. I must do yoga every day. So I'm wow. vegetarian. I'm pure vegetarian. I eat a lot of vegetables and fruit. Mm-hmm. And I try. I'm trying very hard not to be impatient, not to be judgmental. <laughs> I'm still trying. I haven't succeeded. And Divya, before I say goodbye to you, um, what's next in the cards? Uh, if there's anything that you can share with us. So yeah, we were rudely uh, halted by the last lockdown, but we mm-hmm. have a few days left of a wonderful film with Mr. Bachchan in the lead called Goodbye. Ooh, uh-huh. well. And then there is another, <laughs> then there is um, another, uh, there are two other web series. One which I went to shoot for and I was ready in makeup and the police said, no, you're not Ooh. coming out of your hotel. You cannot shoot. So there is a lot of uh, work which was halted, which for, uh-huh. hopefully on the 25th of this month we renew. And there is a lovely new series also on the card, which is a short film actually. And there are these four young people who opened their own production company, but it's very sweet and very interesting. Right. So that's, that'll be the first week of July. So Hopefully there's lots of work because that's all I want. Yay. I'm looking forward to all that. That means more entertainment for me. <laughs> um, so what I have pegged for this weekend is uh, Sardar Ka Grandson. I think that was, yeah. It's lovely. <laughs> you can watch it with your family. You don't need to right. watch who's looking over your shoulder. My mom has already watched it without me. So <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very nice. It's very nice. Very nostalgic. I know a lot of people who burst into tears at one point. Yeah, so, but it's fun. And we had a lovely, lovely time shooting for it in Patiala. And our director, Kashmi Nai, is such a trooper. So she was lovely. Directors who love actors are great to work with. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. It's wonderful. It's a wonderful experience to work with them. And of course, having a cast like that, it's it's not work. It's just wonderful and fun. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. And I'm going to say goodbye to you right now. And thank you from the bottom of my heart for sharing such uh, lovely advice and um, sharing your essence and presence with us. How kind of you. Thank you so much. Take care, Divya. Have fun. Thank you.